<laughs> Greetings critters, it's Fox here and welcome to my Burrow of Thoughts, aka my channel where we talk about everything spooky and today is going to be a spooky book review segment I am calling Don't Go In To The Woods. It is going to be all horror and thriller books that are based in woodland areas, so settle into your burrows because things are about to get spooky. Okay, so the first book I'm going to be talking about is Hunted by Darcy Coates. Now, I read this a while ago and I've read it about two to maybe three times, but a little bit about the plot of this book. Hunted by Darcy Coates is about a brother struggling with grief because his sister was lost in the woods, but no body was ever found. So he and a group of friends trek and follow her footsteps in those very woods, looking for answers, but finding horror instead. Okay, so my thoughts on Hunted by Darcy Coates. First off, this really veered away from what I know Darcy Coates to write, which is a good ghost story. A little simple at times, but she can really write a ghost story. So for this book, I really appreciated the change of trope. Now, being this is based in the Woodland area and they never found her body, obviously, this is the kind of area that people often get lost. So you're constantly wondering, are the main characters going to be found if they ever find his sister? It had a really good amount of tension in the should we turn back and admit defeat and loss or should we continue forward with death at our doorstep to find answers. Love that. It really added to the group's character development and their relationship disintegration and all that, it really worked well. Darcy Coates nailed this one. Now, it did have mystery. It was thrilling in the sense of kills. It was very cat and mouse, stalker vibes. Don't know what's going on till the very end. Who or what is creating this horror in this story? So I love that about this book. Now, the woodland setting is obviously very deterring. Like I said, many of people have gotten lost in this place and it seems to suck sound out. So even if you cry for help, no one's probably gonna hear you. And if you go without a flight plan against police's warnings, you go and get lost, at least in a horror novel. So I was okay with that predictability of them stumbling across horror in the woods and having to fight for survival, which this book is all about. But this was very solid read because the ending threw me for a loop. I thought it was one trope and then it went to another and then it coexisted and I was just very here for it. It's probably Darcy Coates' most strong work, in my opinion, Hunted. It was really well done. It is a little bit chunkier, monkier book. It is a good length, good pace, and I really enjoyed it. So that all being said, I am reading Darcy Coates' Hunted, five tales out of five. I really did enjoy it. And you know what? I'm going to read it next summer again. Okay, so the next book we're going to talk about is The Troop by Nick Cutter. This is one of the first, I would, uh, first 10 horror books that got me into horror reading. I really enjoyed that this is a Canadian author. I really do. So a little bit about the plot. There is a troop of Boy Scouts. They're out for an outdoor adventure on this island in a lake. But their adventure soon turns into a nightmare when a killer tapeworm enters the mix.
Okay, so my thoughts on The Truth by Nick Cutter. This is a skin-crawling creature feature meets coming-of-age horror story. And with that trope came a little bit of a less fresh premise, idea, plot points, and twists. It reminded me of The Thing, it came from the ice, and basically every Stephen King novel I've ever read. And those who know me know I don't really vibe with Stephen King, but this worked, and let me tell you why. Tape rooms have always freaked me out. I have traveled many a times. I have gone to the Dominican, I have gone to Mexico, I have gone to the US, I have gone. And I've always been worried about parasites. And when they entered that into the creature element, it was creepy. It was creepy, well-written, made you feel like you wanted to touch your stomach and just make sure there was no movement. So, it is very old school structured. Like I said, it does coexist with a little bit of a Stephen King vibe. The, the ending was okay. It was okay. In my opinion, it was okay. Um, I don't want to get too much into it. I don't want to say if it was well wrapped up, ambiguous, anything like that. It was just okay for me. It is told from a multi-format perspective in the sense of diary entries, news clippings, and the point of the perspective of the main characters. So I really enjoyed that formatting in this book and that raised the rating for me. Like I said, love Nick Cutter. This is probably one of my favorite books he's ever written. So that all being said, I am rating The Troop by Nick Cutter. Four tails out of five. It was just the ending. I'm sorry, it just didn't jive with me. But it's still really good, solid creature feature. Really good, solid woodland read. Like, you're on an island surrounded by trees with one cabin and a boat. That's a recipe for disaster. Add a tapeworm and you got yourself a Nick Cutter book. That is excellent. The next and last book I'm going to be mentioning is Boris Bosick's It Lives in the Woods. Need I say more? Perfect for this segment. Anywho, what this book is about is a group of hikers embark into the woods looking for an ancient springs, but instead stumble upon a missing hiker who's been gone a many a week. And then they start to wonder, are the legends true that surround these woods and are they safe to get back home? Let's, let's get it right out of the way. Boris Bostic is one of my favorite writers out there, probably in my top 10. I did really love this book though, because everyone knows I love a creature feature, hauntings, and the switch between the two and this book had that the prologue alone will make you pick this book up and not stop reading it other than that i really love that it was told from multiple points of perspective it had each main character's perspective along with some government militia perspective the kind of perspective that makes you feel like you're playing a video game with your friends that you are marching, you are shooting, you are annihilating along with these soldiers. I was there for it. Probably my favorite part in the whole book was a point of perspective through the soldiers. Really loved it. Um, now, the scenery setting is really interesting because it starts out mystical, beautiful, you think fairies, you think gnomes, you're like, ooh, ah, I would look for the springs too. And then it all happens and you're like, so the woods are not safe. And if there's folklore telling you that the woods are not safe, 
something lives in that woods. And let me tell you, something lives in the woods in this book. It was really well done. It was how a creature feature should be done. Really, really, really good. It had the mystery. It had the blood. It had the mix of civilians and the military. It had the survival of the smartest and the fittest. It really just had a good balance. And it's a short read and the pace is there. Oh my goodness. One of my top five creature features of the year. Really well done. Love this book. And it's also a hard copy edition that I got. Which is good because I'm going to be rereading this every time I go hiking from now on. It makes me scared of the tree line behind my house. Made me a little nervous. So that being said, I'm reading It Lives in the Woods by Boris Bosick. Five Tales out of five. If you're looking for something based in the woods, short read, really well paced, look no further than one of these books. All right, critters, that's all from this Den of Frights today. Thank you so much for being here, for watching, subscribing, liking, all your support. It means the whole wide and wild wilderness to me. It really does, critters. And until next time, stay cozy and stay spooky. Bye.